the Common Council to order, and I will ask our clerk to call the roll. Alderperson Grisham. Here. Haas. Here. Keen. Here. Lysak. Here. Frankie. Here. Rote. Here. Stefanski. Here. Tenorio. Here. Vitale. Here. Weigel. Alderman Weigel is excused this evening. Nine present, one excused. Quorum is present. Please rise if you are able and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led this evening by Alderperson Grisham. Thank you. We will move on to uh, item D on our agenda. We have five public hearings this evening, and I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number one. Resolution relative to the determination for a conditional use permit for AS Towing LLC, a proposed light motor vehicle service use, to be located at 5225 West Electric Avenue. Thank Sorry, you. Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Common Council members. Uh, this is a proposed use at 52nd and Electric Avenue. Uh, surrounding uses are commercial and light industrial in nature. Uh, the Union Pacific Railroad is also uh, intersecting Electric Avenue just to the east. The property is zoned light manufacturing, M1, and uh, light uh, automobile and, and vehicle service facilities are considered conditional uses within our zoning ordinance thus prompting the need for a uh, public hearing. The, uh, there are uh, currently automotive, automotive repair uh, tenants within the building, and the, there's a new property owner. The new property owner is bringing in a towing business, and they'll combine the auto repair and the towing business uh, together and uh, work, work together. As such, um, the conditional use is, uh, is required. In, in inspecting the site um, at the onset of the application, there were a number of uh, problems with, with the property in terms of parking within the street, um, a vehicle repair uh, facility, an oversupply of cars. Um, in other words, six cars and probably about uh, six parking stalls and probably about 15 cars um, on site and spilling out into the street. So staff has worked with the existing owner of, of the site to prepare a site plan to help bring some control to the site. In, in other words, uh, there's also been um, an, an off-site remote site that's been, uh, uh, that the owner has that will be used for the longer term vehicle parking and storage needs. So the root issue was that overcrowding of vehicles on the site and um, what's, what's come to be is a little bit more of a cleanup as we've seen in the past uh, several weeks and actually a month or so. This went to plan commission back in June and was held and then followed up, came back in July, and in working with the owner, we could see a progression towards improvement. So um, with that, uh, the owner, some, one of the solutions was to have a remote site, and they have a remote site in, in Milwaukee on North 40th Street, which will be used to house some of the longer-term storage of vehicles. Um, so the business will be transporting vehicles that are, that are in need of repair to this site for, for repair work. Uh, they won't be kept on site, and this site it is for, for long term. This is the site plan that's been prepared. Um, it's sort of a, a mock-up of something that was approved several years ago. Um, the landscaping beds are existing, and those um, under the old ownership have sort of fallen into disrepair and will be replenished uh, with new landscaping and cleaned up. In addition, there are about seven parking stalls on the site. Those will be primarily used for just the quick turnover of vehicles uh, day in and day out. Again, the longer term will be kept um, in Milwaukee. And there have been a couple of object objections. The nearby um, neighbor, um, uh, the commercial tenant, was, was concerned about the aesthetics. Uh, their property had to go through a similar procedure for you know, site landscaping and architectural. They made improvements to their site, and they wanted to ensure that this property was also going to be kept up to that standard. Um, in addition, uh, there was some concerns from na the neighborhood about uh, spillover into the street and just keeping it organized uh, for, for future enjoyment of, and, and success of other people's businesses within the area. So the plan commission did uh, take this up um, at, at last month on August 24th, and they did make a recommendation for approval. There are a number of conditions um, 
within that approval um, of the plan commission, which are reflected in the resolution this evening. I'm happy to go into any of these at any point uh, with you this evening if there's questions. But um, one of the, uh, or some of the things include a privacy fence along Electric Avenue to help screen uh, the view into the side of that parking lot. Um, it will also help screen the refuse area. And then overnight tow company vehicles will not be parked in the street. They'll have to be parked on the site. Uh, so there won't be overnight street parking of tow trucks or commercial vehicles within the street. Um, third, there's a, a off-site or remote um, location for longer-term storage of vehicles. And then all repair work will have to be done inside the building. It can't be done in the lot or, again, in the street. And then the overhead bay doors should be kept closed during more intensive operations uh, that could generate sound to the immediate uh, surrounding neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Are there any questions from the Common Council on public hearing number one? Alderman Rowe. Sorry. Um, is there a time frame for any of those conditions? Right out, I mean, item A for the fence? Yeah, the fence would be installed um, this, this fall, this, this year. So it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be a future. As soon as it, we could time it with their occupancy so that as they're seeking occupancy permit, you know, we could be requiring the fence. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Okay, seeing none, are there any questions from the members of the audience on public hearing number one? If there are, please come up to the podium and then please give us your name and address for our official record. I think if you just push the button with the little person on it, the green light will come on. These are kind of new. There we go. I'm uh, Debbie O'Brien, and I'm at 5300 West Lincoln, where the business um, that is kind of in the back. We, we, our front is on Lincoln, but our back is on Electric Avenue. And we just have a couple of uh, concerns. One of them, um, obviously, it looks like it was addressed with the um, installation of a fence from an aesthetic uh, standpoint. Now, on one of the meetings, someone had had indicated it was one of the meetings that you had that um, it didn't, you know, front Lincoln, but that if, you know, it, it did come up against electric. So we kind of would, uh, you know, encourage the, and are happy to see that there's some uh, talk of a fence, you know, just to block. It looks kind of like a junkyard, <laughs> uh, you know, it really looks aesthetically pretty, um, pretty bad. But the concern that we have is, um, Every day their vehicles continue to uh, take up street uh, parking and um, they block our UPS and... Um, yeah, they, 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 they block our driveway. Two of their cars um, are parked <coughs> in our driveway, so our UPS driver has to go over the sidewalk on the third part of the driveway and back in. Even tonight as we were coming over, one of the cars is still in our driveway. It's just constantly there and maybe we could ask them to move all those cars onto Mobile Street or something. There's, there's not a lot of traffic there. It wouldn't block our driveway. And the overriding concern tends to be snow removal. And as the plows would come up, because they do leave them overnight constantly. The, the truck that's in the picture has been there for a, a month and a half, uh, the pink one. Um, but the snow removal, we're concerned that the plow will just come up and then have to deviate into the, into the through traffic. And that'll just create more snow piling up on our driveway when we're having our snow plow, our snow being removed by our service, that kind of a thing. So I think the the, um, the, the, the cars on the street are the overriding. Yeah, concern. just because I, again, it impedes our um, our freight uh, deliveries, our UPS deliveries, and it's on. It would be our um, the farthest from the east. Uh, we have a freight door that closest they closest to their building. yeah closest to their building. Um, but again, you know, as Mike had said, the concern is is that when winter comes, you know, the plow is going to come through it, and if they continue to leave uh, their vehicles out on the street, you know, the plow just doesn't have enough clearance to swing around, and uh, the snow is going to constantly, uh, when you know the need arises, it'll just be left in front of our um, access for our UPS and our our freight uh, deliveries. But um, you know, again, I'm, I'm glad to see the, the fence um, suggestion. Uh, but again, it's just those vehicles just never seem to move. There's constantly tow trucks. They also do park them on Mo is it Mobile? Mobile Street. Mobile Street. 
Um, so, you know, my concern, I don't know what they're looking to, if they're looking to bring in more vehicles. I just think they seem to be at a max right now. Um, that's just those, wanted you to consider Yeah, that. those are the two things that are of concern. Thank you. I don't know, Steve, if you have anything to respond to that or work with the applicant. Yeah, actually, uh, those very concerns were all the, uh, I guess, the, the reason for the conditions in the special use resolution this evening. Um, and they were presented to the Planning Commission tonight, now tonight to the Council. So um, I would encourage um, both property owners, so, you know, the new property owner, as well as, you know, uh, existing property owners in the neighborhood, businesses, to let's, let's talk to each other and find out what the solutions could be to make sure everybody's, you know, happy and thriving in the neighborhood not creating a problem for someone else. Thank you. Any other people from the Alderman Vitale? Thank you, Alderman Vitale. Any other uh, questions from the members of the audience on public hearing number one? Mayor Devine. Alderperson Keene. Um, Steve, what are they operating as now? What is the business code? Um, it's, uh, that's a good question, it's on the tip of my tongue, and it, but it is an existing auto repair business that's in there now and um, I'll have to I'll have to follow up with you after. So what the is session. the if it's already an auto repair, what are what is the resolution to propose light motor vehicle service? Yeah, so there's an existing um, auto repair use in there and then the other business, the owner's business that owns the property now is also bringing auto repair light Auto repair as oh, well so as he the towing. wants to. Right. Okay, I see. Yeah. So, are the vehicles that are currently parked on the street and having issues owned by whoever this DBA is going to be, or what's currently in operation? Are these two separate businesses, they're, or they're one? They're two, two separate businesses, but I guess all of them would be controlled under this special use for the property. Um, the conditional use runs with the property, so um, it would be. It would behoove both businesses, I guess, to, to follow the, the use limitations of this site. It's a very, it's a small site. There's not a big parking lot. They do have a lot of cars in this picture here and, um, you know, in here. So um, it has improved. Um, I haven't been out there today, but, um, you know, we, it is something we would, we have been monitoring over the past month or so since the first plan commission meeting. So is that a shared parking lot between the current light auto repair and what will be the new? Right, yes. So they have, the new owner has a separate remote site uh, in Milwaukee for parking. They can mm -hmm. park. If they have vehicles that are going to be here for a longer period of time, something that they can't handle in a day or two, um, they won't be located here. They'd be stored on another remote site in Milwaukee and then brought in as, as they'd be ready to be worked on. So the pink truck that hasn't moved is not for this business. It's for the... It, it is. I, I'm, of the understanding, I'd have to follow up the owner, but I'm understanding it is sort of a, a project uh, truck. Uh, I think it's a food truck or, or some sort, but um, um, I don't know. I don't know the full story behind that, but it has been there on occasions and and not on sometimes. But okay, thank you. Sure, thank you. Anybody else from the audience with questions on public Mayor, hearing number one? Mayor Devine. Other person, Ranky. Uh, Steve, could you maybe explain other repercussions if uh, basically if these conditions aren't met? 
or they're not followed? Yeah, I mean, and the typical. So did you yeah. um, indicate the hours of operation? Oh, yeah, hours of operation are um, daytime hours, and um, I can look those up here. Those are um, uh, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Monday through Sunday, so seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. So, and that includes the typical, you know, auto repair, you know, everything from oil changes to, you know, tire changes, um, some small light engine work um, on vehicles. And, and then to your, um, your other question was, uh, the first question was, can you repeat that? Uh, the repercussions. If, oh, yes. Yeah. Well, it would start out, I mean, if, if after, you know, a, a violation of the special use, uh, they would be sent a notice and order and given a certain short window of time to, to remedy that. And if it's not remedied, it would be sent to municipal court, a summons and complaint process, and ultimately, could ultimately end up in the uh, termination of, a, of the conditional use permit as well. Worst case. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from, I guess, the members of the audience or the council on this item for public hearing? Okay, seeing none, we will close public hearing number one and we will move to public hearing number two and I will ask the clerk to read that out. Resolution relative to the determination for a conditional use permit for XLAC Biosciences, a proposed research laboratory to be located at 662 South 94th Place. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Um, XLOC, XLOC Biosciences is a, a research and development company. They're currently located in the um, Medical College of Wisconsin, and um, they're a small entrepreneurial business, um, biosciences business that is spreading its wings. They own this property at 662 94th Place, and they are uh, researching proteins and um, other uh, scientific things that I wouldn't be able to pronounce, but uh, basically anti-inflammatories to alleviate symptoms, of, you know, certain health issues such as uh, psoriasis, um, uh, arthritis, and some other uh, things. And there's sort of a continuing uh, trend there um, that they're working towards these therapies that uh, could even expand into, um, you know, uh, 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 solutions or, you know, health, health solutions uh, beyond, beyond just psoriasis and so on. So uh, it is an existing building, um, and they are going to be um, locating here. The property zoned C3 community commercial and research labs are considered uh, special or conditional uses within that zoning district. The um, the activities within the within the building uh, again, sort of cultivation of bacteria that's engineered to produce certain specific proteins, which are used in the health fields. Um, and basically the bacteria that's being used is sort of a widely used strain that doesn't pose a health risk to the surrounding community or people. Uh, the development of therapies for, again, psoriasis and uh, uh, psoriatic arthritis, and their, their approach holds potential to follow up on uh, follow-up therapies um, such as MS, uh, multiple sclerosis. And again, the activities will not produce noise, fumes, odors, uh, or other waste or disturbances which will be uh, noticed by people in the area. Um, nearby to the immediate um, uh, south is a residential um, home, and then across the street is a light manufacturing uh, business. Um, to the north are other commercial businesses. Uh, the hours of operation are daytime hours between 8 and 5 p.m. And one of the things they're gonna be doing within the building um, is updating, uh, converting some of the old offices within this space in the gold color uh, to uh, to lab area. So the building is roughly about um, right around 2,000, uh, maybe a little bit less than 2,000 square feet. The area of, of conversion is about 500 square feet of office, or of office to lab. So Planning Commission has recommended approval at the last meeting. Uh, we've received no objections to date, and uh, thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are there any questions from the Common Council on public hearing number two? Mr. Mayor. Alderman Stefanski. In their stipulations, are there anything that says that they can't do any kind of uh, testing or research on anything that would cause something like what happened with COVID, that type of thing? Um, I, that, that is not in the, uh, 
especially or the conditional use resolution. Um, what we what we know is that the you know the objections you know what they're what they're doing here isn't going to create uh, vibration, sound, noise, uh, or disturb you know the the surrounding you know neighborhood or community. Um, beyond that, what they're doing within the within the building is health related. Um, I can't really speak to it much further. I, I believe there may be an applicant here this evening that could maybe elaborate a little bit more to, to answer the question. If not, we can certainly follow up with you on that. Yeah, if you could, because I wouldn't want to see something like that going on here in the city. <clears throat> the, um, if I may, the, one of their, um, I guess, dealing with you know different bacteria that they have, it, it's sort of akin to what what Chris Hansen does. I mean, working in, in their case, working with cultures, you know natural developing natural colorings and so on so they're similar similar processes um, you know not intended to you know create a, another pandemic okay thank you sure. any other questions from the common council now remember this is your chance <laughs> okay now we're going to the audience are there any members of the audience with questions or comments on public hearing number two? If you could please come up to the microphone like the couple did for public hearing number one. Could you push the button with the person on it? All right. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, my son Bruce lives right next door to where this building is. And we'd like to know if they use live animals for any testing. And if they do, how do they dispose of this material? You know, we're concerned about it. Sure. Mr. Chair, turning that one over to you. I, 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 don't, have the, uh, I don't have the answer to that, but um, you can certainly find out. It's not my understanding that they're using any animal, um, animals within this, within this facility here. And how do they dispose of whatever they're working with, their chemicals or... Yeah, I mean they have a um, a waste service that would be um, uh, designed for handling, you know, the the waste, any you know, of of, of their labs. But um, I can certainly follow up with you on that. Okay, I appreciate sure. that. Sure. Can I turn this off? Yes, please. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience on public hearing number two? Okay, seeing none, we will close public hearing number two. And I will ask the clerk to read our third public hearing this evening. Resolution relative to the determination for a conditional use permit for the market at Six Points, a proposed food-centric collection of restaurants, limited food production and retail uses, located at 16 Star Star, South 66th Street. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the market at six points represents phase two of the, uh, what we all, all, all know as uh, south of National or Sona. Mandel, develop, uh, the developer Mandel has um, uh, the, uh, the lofts building, 110 unit apartment uh, development under construction right now. And in roughly about um, two months, uh, we'll start on the, the corner development on the corner of 66th and National. Uh, the area with the black outline around it is the subject of tonight's public hearing. Um, it is a, a food-centric type of collection of uses, three buildings uh, occupying roughly about 13,000 square feet of space, and everything from you know restaurants, you know limited food production, um, potentially a wine bar, event spaces within this um, 13,000 square feet, and it would be broken up into different tenant spaces um, designed to suit the, the tenants. Um, it would be focused on local businesses, um, local to either West Dallas or Metro Milwaukee. Uh, there won't, it's not at least designed at this point to be any kind of larger franchise of sorts. Expected hours for this general array of business would be anywhere between 6 a.m. And, and midnight daily. And there are 51 parking stalls on this property outlined in black. The larger area has, is roughly another 100 or so which could be shared um, in the immediate area, and I can get into that in a little bit. But um, again, the, uh, the type of uses here, restaurants, event space, uh, limited food production do, does require conditional use, and that's purpose for tonight's hearing. Uh, just a little bit closer view of the site plan. 
and landscaping plan, um, the blue areas are patio areas and the gold areas are, are buildings. Um, there will be landscaping um, and then there are going to be sort of a, a refuse area behind the building and a service court behind the building and that interior courtyard area surrounded by patios and, and other buildings. So the, uh, the landscaping plan, green areas are, are landscaping. Uh, we've worked with our with the Mandel team and the um, city forester to um, enhance the landscaping. Planning Commission had approved that at the last meeting and um, the 51 parking stalls are shown um, internally on this site. Um, and then there are three on the very north end of that private drive that enters off of uh, uh, Lapham Street or 60, 66th Street. So there will be shared parking um, between the lofts development, the apartment development. That development has 89 underground parking stalls as well as another 41 or so um, surface parking. And then to the east of that, there's going to be, you know, roughly about uh, uh, another, you would take another 100 or so parking stalls between the um, tonight, tonight's subject site, uh, 51 on this site in, in outlined in red, and then another 21 of internal street uh, side parking and then 30 shared spaces just west of the uh, proposed development. So that will be supportive of um, not only these developments that are being uh, built here but also um, shared with that of uh, farmers market patrons and so on. There is a larger picture uh, view as well um, of, of parking in this neighborhood. So um, while this site south of National has historically always been used for uh, parking, and then before that it was um, uh, light industrial. But there are other uh, places to park within the area. If you're looking for off-street parking, there are municipal parking lots north of the farmer's market uh, buildings themselves, and then south of the farmer's market. And then the city has agreements with the school district as well as the, a nearby church for additional off-street parking. And in the future, um, uh, along Mitchell Street, there, there could be um, close to another 200 parking stalls between this development and uh, 68th Street. So this is just a closer look at the building arrangements, um, you know, the different square footages of each of those buildings and the types of uses. And then this is really themed, the developer was really theming this site, the development of the site on two sites, one in Nashville, Tennessee called the Diskin uh, Cider Building and then Little Man Ice Cream in Denver, Colorado. Um, he does have a, uh, an ice cream sort of uh, dairy type of use, uh, hamburgers, ice cream that is uh, proposed within, uh, within the building. So that's sort of the, one of the inspirations that was seen nationally that they want to bring to West Dallas. And this is a, just a closer view of a rendered view of what it could look like if you were uh, hovering in a drone or something uh, above the farmer's market looking southwest. You would see the, uh, the corner tenant, the Dairyland tenant. That's the ice cream and hamburger place. And then the other two buildings flanking that in the background, which would be slightly higher and elevated and feature canopy roof features, uh, metal siding, a cedar plank, accent panel, um, accent lighting, as well as outdoor patio space. Again, just to sort of capture your interest to keep you in the neighborhood a little bit longer rather than just going to the farmer's market and leaving. So it's about, all about the place and keeping you here uh, a little bit longer. And uh, of course, you know, spending your money and eating too much. So. Uh, just a, a, grounds, a ground view um, of that same vantage point coming back to earth and looking southwest again. And then this is along 66th Street looking northwest. Um, the farmer's market is off behind us to your right. Just the elevations of the different materials being used, the cedar cladding, the canopies, future signage uh, arrangements, the, the uh, iconic, I guess, Dairyland uh, milk can uh, feature. It's kind of like the uh, the pop on that corner and then um, again just sort of uh, different overhead different types of glass being used on the building with the roll-up overhead uh, garage doors which are very popular on in, in summer months so those will all be employed on this site um, to to make it a, a place um, plan commission did have some recommendations and the developer has has listened and acknowledged those they're gonna be adding some additional articulation outside of the building including a another canopy over an outdoor patio area and some additional um, cedar planking um, on the um, uh, east and uh, south side of the building. So Plan Commission has recommended approval and uh, have received no objections to date. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any questions from the Common Council on our third public hearing? Mayor Devine. Hold person, Grisham. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, you went into a lot of the, the parking issues uh, surrounding that area and the farmer's market has a big draw too. So uh, I appreciate all of the focus put on that. However, I noted in the presentation it said use with non-exclusive shared stalls. So is there a percentage of these parking areas that are devoted strictly to exclusivity for the, the tenants or businesses that you know visitors of the market and whatnot are going to have to go deeper into the neighborhoods to park? Yeah, so the, um, the areas that I know that are gonna be dedicated to the apartments are um, the, well, the underground parking underneath the, the lofts apartments and then the 41 parking stalls here. And then these 24 are slated as you know guest visitor parking for for the loft. So if you're coming to visit a friend in the apartments, you would park somewhere out here um, if you're not parking here. Um, what could be shared, I think, with the farmer's market would be these 21 that are highlighted, these internal private roads within the, um, within the development. Uh, it looks, it's gonna look very much like a street, um, like a city street, uh, just a for neighborhood look with uh, street parking along the curb and sidewalk area. So those 21, and then additionally, these 30 here could be uh, used for staff as well as, um, as, well as the public. Um, in, addition, um, in addition to those, you know, these roughly 51 here and another 51 here, um, there would be street parking um, as there is now along National Avenue and um, the, the South 66th Street area. So, and that was one of the reasons, you know, just knowing the, the future development potential of this area you know, that's one of the reasons why we, you know, put this map together and, you know, um, uh, our, our team and economic development um, worked with the church nearby to get an additional 40 off street parking just to help, you know, bridge some of that gap and, um, you know, keep it, keep it within the area where there's, there is an opportunity. It will be, you know, it, as we all know, it, it gets very congested and busy depending on, you know, what, what events going on or what events are going on. But so this we're hoping is going to help, you know, ease some of that parking impact. Okay, thank you, Steve. I have one additional follow-up question. Uh, as far as street parking, are there current restrictions right now? One hour, two hour, no restrictions? You ask good questions, and I'd, I'll have to look at that closer to see if it is, is in fact controlled in some manner. I believe it is, but I'm not sure if it's one or two hours. Okay, all right, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from the members of the council on public hearing number three? Hearing none, are there any questions or comments from the members of the audience on public hearing number three? Seeing none, we will close our third public hearing and I will ask the clerk to read out public hearing number four. Resolution relative to the determination for a conditional use permit for Big V Coffee, a proposed restaurant with drive through service to be located within a portion of the property at 10230-10288 West National Avenue. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so this went before the Planning Commission last month and Planning Commission tabled the item um, and we'll get into the reasons why, but um, I'll give the presentation this evening. Staff is recommending we hold this item this evening um, and, and we'll come back to the Planning Commission later this month, ideally work these uh, remaining issues out and then come back to the Common Council um, at a future date, early October. So Big B is a, a national chain, it's a to-go coffee chain, drive-through um, uh, primarily. They do have a walk-up window, but the vast majority of their business is drive-through service. Um, and that's the reason for the uh, conditional use this evening. Uh, drive-throughs are, are conditional uses. So they are based out of Michigan. They have other locations in, in various states. Um, uh, they are, in this case, uh, locating in a portion of a uh, parking lot um, it's seldom used for parking right now, but it uh, does also um, function as a, a traffic aisle across the south side of that parking lot. And it's identified on the, the plan here, outlined in blue, is where they're, they're looking to establish a ground lease. They'd be leasing from the current property owner, um, uh, this uh, roughly about a quarter of an acre site um, on the south side of the uh, shopping center, the strip, strip mall. 
the hours for Bigby Coffee are 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and then 7 to 7 on um, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Um, yeah, 7, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Sundays. So the zoning, again, is C3, and drive throughs are special uses. Um, just a closer look at the uh, specific area within the parking lot. The red line, um, in, this, in this case, represents uh, the in an easement area. If you look on the right-hand side of the screen, that's the uh, certified survey map that, that's been presented to the city to carve off that quarter of an acre of uh, lot area, a lot two. And then the hatched, hatch mark area represents an easement that will allow you to enter off of National Avenue and then um, also enter or exit the bank um, from the site. The drive-through traffic up to the uh, window will be on the north side of the building facing Piggly Wiggly and, and the parking lot. And then the directional, the traffic will be changed from a two-way in this area on the south side to um, a, a directional from east to west. And we'll show a little diagram in a bit. Surrounding uses in this case, um, the other property to the west, as we all know, is Target. And then uh, there are cross access agreements between those sites that will be maintained. And there's a bank, a uh, Waterstone Bank to the south, and that cross access easement will be maintained for customers to enter or exit. Uh, they also have the opportunity to enter or exit from National Avenue. And this is just a closer view of, of that drive-through configuration. Again, the, uh, the, shop, the grocery store is to the north, as well as the parking field, the main parking field. And then cars, they're showing about seven vehicles queued here, entering uh, one lane. There's a pass-through lane uh, just to the north of that um, within this easement area. So if you're not going to the drive-up coffee shop, you can still pass by the drive-through line and uh, continue about your, your way over to Target or, or moving down one of these aisles. And just a broader view. There is additional stacking. I mean, there are seven cars shown on here, and if, if needed, um, they could probably go up to about, uh, uh, about 12, 12 vehicles. And the exterior of the building is going to be a combination of um, a brick veneer on the lower base course, and a little bit, um, uh, a bit of a surround on the west elevation, and then cement board siding on the other elevations with a, a metal roof. Just a closer view of the floor plan. It's pretty simple, a kitchen, a storage area, and an uh, employee restroom. So the plan commission has tabled this at the August 24th meeting. The main issues being um, just the location of that building and the site, and we've been working with the, uh, uh, the developer and uh, their uh, site development people on the lo proper location of that building, and there's a few different iterations. The idea, would, I think, is going to be to shift that building a little further east and then um, uh, relocating the refuse area accordingly, maybe on the east or west side of the building, um, and then ensuring that there's sufficient um, and ample drive-through stacking uh, along with uh, pavement markings to ensure that there's not conflicts within the, within the existing parking lot. Um, it, one, one other thing that the Planning Commission wanted to ensure is that there's um, proper um, pedestrian crossings and pavement and traffic control markings within the parking lot. If you look back at the um, plan here, if uh, nothing's preventing someone. They, it, since Big B does have a, a walk-up window on the um, west side of the building, uh, you could park here and, and walk over up to, the, up to the front door or up to the front window to place your order. So uh, there will be a need for you know, a crosswalk feature. They're showing one a little further west here, but it could be it could be two of them. It could be one further further east as well. So it's things like that that we, we feel we need to work out yet. Plan Commission tabled this, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions as needed. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the Common Council on public hearing number four? Mayor Devine. Alderperson Grisham. This is going to be more of a commentary than a question. Looking at that, I can see why the Plan Commission would table that to work out the bugs. Uh, as a frequent visitor to that shopping area, I would have great concerns with the setup as to the entrance off of National Avenue. Um, it's almost like playing bumper cars when you come into that uh, parking lot as it is right now. So turning left and heading over, is that a single lane that I'm seeing? And would people who were trying to circumvent the extra stops of going around, for example, 
uh, pass in front of Pig Piggly Wiggly to get over to Target because that's what I would typically do is turn left and then you know bypass the slower traffic to get over to Target. Would that be interfering? People would have to wait if there were cars there already. Is that where the actual drive-through lane is, or will there be additional lane of traffic that can still go into the lot? Yeah, there will be a pass pass through lane so if you're if you're not or if you're in the if you're in the coffee I guess the coffee line uh, you're you're one of these cars here uh, but there is um, an additional you know roughly 10 or so feet to make the pass another lane to make a pass by that drive through traffic and continue over to target or to pass by and then park at the grocery store okay one follow-up question Traffic study, how many vehicles are traveling on National Avenue daily? I asked the tough questions. I'm sorry, Steve. Is there an engineer in the house? <laughs> I, I, I can get that. That would right be my there. concern. There's a, a huge flow of traffic. Yeah. So, okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Any other questions from the members of the Common Council on public hearing number four? All right. Are there any comments or questions from the members of the audience on public hearing number four? Okay, we will close our fourth public hearing. And I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number five. Noise variance permit for a unit drop forge, 1903 South 62nd Street. Who's presenting this one? Bob, is this your presentation? <laughs> it's okay. Bruce? Sorry, so yeah, um, no formal presentation tonight. Um, really, it's just an opportunity just to uh, let members of the council and the mayor know that in the three years that I've been here and then actually since the issuance of the current variance, which is nine years um, um, standing at this point, that we have no um, complaints on file um, with Unit Forge um, with regard to the current variance. Um, and really, uh, the highlight of, of the current variance is, is um, our understanding really to allow them to operate until 11 p.m. Um, as opposed to 10 p.m., uh, which is an ordinance at this point. And um, so uh, with that in mind, um, again, we haven't received as a health department any concerns um, from uh, the, the community um, with regard to uh, the current variance as it stands. And um, um, Health Department has no opposition to um, uh, the current standing and, and also just the way that the variance is, is um, currently structured. Um, so with that, um, I guess I would take any questions you might have. Or Thank you, Commissioner Leishow. Any questions from the council on our last public hearing? Seeing none, are there any? Mr. Mayor. Oh, there's I one. Say my oh, two this, cents. this guy used to work there. Yeah, I appreciate, Bob, that you uh, did visit uh, Unit Forging. You know, uh, to me, I mean, Unit Forging has been in existence, uh, I would say, over 100 years, you know. And, and really, Unit Forging has been uh, a ground stone, really, for the, uh, for the uh, community, really, been having uh, provided good living jobs and uh, and again, they've been provide the fact that uh, the noise levels they all they always comply to make as best as possible for their operation. So they've been investing millions of dollars throughout the years to make uh, you know acceptable for the surrounding you know for the neighborhood. So that's all I have. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Mayor Devine. Other person, Grisham. Bob, have the residents in the area been notified? of this request of the noise variance? Yeah, it's my understanding that the, uh, that the public notice was issued prior to this uh, public hearing. Okay, so it's a public notice, but no direct mailings? Not from the health department, but okay. a public notice. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the council? Hearing none, are there any questions or comments Mayor, from the, uh, oh, you just got in there, older person know, ranking. Oh, just by the skin of my teeth. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry about that, Bob. Did I understand they want to extend the hours till 11 o'clock? 
No, so the current variance allows them technically to operate until 11 o'clock. And so they're just looking for an extension, a continuance of the current variance for another certain number of years. Oh, so it is at 11 right now? Correct. I see. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Thank you. Last chance, council members. All right, now we're going to the audience. Is there anybody in the audience with comments or questions on public hearing number five? Okay, seeing none, or I'm seeing one, sorry. Hello, my name's Ron Jansen. I'm the president and general manager of Unit Drop Forge, so I appreciate your time tonight. And I just want to say that, um, you know, as Finn said, we've been in the community uh, for 104 years. I've been a part of it for 23 years. Um, we love the community. Uh, we're proud to be a part of West Dallas. And we, were, we look forward to another 104 years. Uh, this extension is crucial to the continuation of the company with the equipment we have. Um, it's a pri privately held company. It's run like a family, but if, if um, the variance wasn't to be extended, that would be a very difficult position for the company. And I just don't see a situation where this company could be moved to another location, for example, especially with the, um, the significant costs of the base movement, the foundations, et cetera. So, Again, we're proud to be a part of West Dallas. We're proud to work with the community. If there's anything that comes up, any questions, concerns, comments, we're happy to give tours and looking forward to next year to celebrate our 105th year and likely have an open house for the community to come to. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jansen. Any other comments from the audience? All right, then we will close our public hearings this evening. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> we will move on to item E, which is citizen participation. This is the opportunity for the council to receive information from members of the public. We aim to keep this to a 30 minute period on our agenda and we ask that you limit your comments to one statement of no longer than five minutes. Does anybody wish to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Hi, my name is Mark Vicen. I live at 1338 South 65th Street. Um, I appreciate the opportunity earlier, Alderman Vitale, to speak. I promise I won't be talking about the ownership, but I, I came here to talk about the property on 6500 West Greenfield Avenue. You guys are going to be voting soon, someday, on giving this place a liquor license again. It hasn't been that long since I've been up here talking to you guys. When I say guys, I don't mean police. That's a generic. Uh, um, you know, the blood on the sidewalk is still wet. It's not dry yet. It hasn't been that long. Everybody that has owned that property in the last, I've been there for 30 years. It's been nothing but problems for the last 15 years. Scotty, back in his day when he owned it, um, he Mark, can you try pushing the on button again? I don't know if the battery Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, Scotty's was, uh, you know, pills downstairs and cocaine upstairs. That was his motto. Um, there has been a lot of people that have been coming in front of the committee. They bring very clean cut people without records applying for the liquor license, and they get it. And they eventually get revoked because there's always been issues with that, it's always false information in what they tell you to get that liquor <clears throat> license. I look at all these, these, these public hearings you have and what's going on with my district, District 1 and the farmer's market area. It's going in the direction that is it's pretty exciting. Opening up another corner tavern is not exciting anymore. Those were old days, West Dallas. We don't need that kind of business in District 1. If you guys want it in your district, you know, and have at it. It's, it's nothing of problems. It's, it's violence. It's noise. It is litter. It is, you know, it got to the point where I would call up the police. 
414-302-8000, press zero for the op for instant help. I called it enough times. You know, Chief Mitchell, he, you know, the last, the last case scenario there was that there was an assault on one of his officers. I used to call up the police and tell them there's fighting in the streets. The dispatcher would ask me, well, how do you know it's fighting? What am I, an idiot? You know, it got to the point where I sleep with my windows closed. I, I'm not scared to live where I'm at. I mean, Debbie, when she was alive, she says, Mark, you're going to be sitting on your front porch and you're going to get shot. It's, that's West Dallas. That's what you want to bring West Dallas back to. We do not need another corner tavern. I don't care who the owner is. It is, it, the, the building itself is not conducive to a restaurant. If Alderman uh, Weigel was here, he would tell you firsthand experience that you're not going to do 50% food, 50% liquor. You had experienced guys at the Crooked Crow saying they're pushing 30% food. It's, it's a very hard thing. People come in front of the committee and they tell you what you want to hear. You know, as I said before, the blood on the sidewalk is not dry yet. There's a lot of issues, and I just hope that you got you, you the committee votes not to give them a license just for the sake of what's in the best interest for the city. Um, people are not entitled to a liquor license because they come in front of you and they have no, no record. Um, I don't ask much from the city. I just ask a couple of things. Uh, the right to privacy and the right to um, being protected. I, I feel that if you give that building another liquor license, that's invading on my rights to privacy and safety based on what has happened in the past. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vicenna. Any other... Um, anyone else in the audience rather wish to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Okay, seeing none, we will close citizen participation and move on to item F of tonight's agenda, which contains the announcements of our standing committees, which will be meeting during recess. <clears throat> Those room numbers are listed on page two of the agenda. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, moving on to item G, the mayor's report. I have a few things this evening. A <clears throat> um, couple events coming up later this week. On September 8th is our final concert series of the summer. We will have music by Andrea and the Mods playing uh, classic rock, pop, country, as well as just plain old good music. Uh, Andrea grew up in West Dallas and she will be joined at Veterans Park by Pizza from Flower Girl and Flame. The food truck Tots on the Street and 1840 Brewing Company will be present as well. That's on September 8th. And then on the next evening, September 9th, right outside of City Hall here, we have the annual Art on the Plaza where we partner with Inspiration Studios for some public art festivities. Admission to both of these events are free. <clears throat> Friday night's event will have um, artwork for sale by local artists. Again, beer from 1840 Brewing Company. There will be a food truck and Pete's Pops will be present. And there will be live music by Derek Byrne and Patty Grass. So those two events are both coming up uh, this Thursday and Friday. On another topic, I don't believe we've had a meeting since we had a primary in West Dallas. But as uh, you all may know, we had um, one of our older persons run for state treasurer. And I just want to uh, take a minute to commend him for running. I know they were not the results that he wanted, and he worked very hard. It takes a lot to run for office. You put yourself out there for lumps and bumps. And I just want to um, commend Alderman Angelito Tenorio for taking that leap and running for statewide office. Um, also just want to mention two proclamations that I'd made for the month of September. Um, it is at the request of uh, a lot of you know Peggy Papia, who just retired recently from the health department, contacted me asking about um, doing a proclamation for Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, which I was happy to do. And then it is also 
Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and that came from the family of Mackenzie Clyde, who a lot of you will remember had a very special day with the West Dallas Police and Fire Department when she was battling her cancer, and we all miss her and her smile. And as a lot of you also know, we have a very special relationship with the MAC Fund here in West Dallas, with that being surrounding Candy Cane Lane, so I just want to mention those two proclamations. Thank you. Uh, that does conclude the mayor's report this evening. Item H is the alderperson's reports. Do we have any of those? Mayor Devine. Alderperson Keene. Um, I can't speak to all of them, but I do want to thank um, any of the local businesses and citizens who participated in the few um, back to school supply drives, uh, free haircuts, uh, legacy cuts, and Alderman Grisham and I's district had a big event. We were able to fill 70 backpacks, give away free haircuts, um, bounce houses, and Sonic the Hedgehog showed up, and he got in a dunk tank, and I know the rec center had put one on, and a lot of local businesses contributed their time to give free haircuts, give supplies. Citizens stopped by and gave supplies, so I just want to thank everyone who participated in those events. Um, to help get the kiddos uh, ready and back to school for a successful year. Thank you. Any other older persons reports? Older person Reiki. Idea if we offer oh. I'm sorry. Alderman Scenario and I belong to the Board of Health, and uh, we just wanted to t tell everybody that there's a rummage sale at the Senior Center on the dates that you have indicated, on Thursday and Friday, September 8th and September 9th, so people have their choice if they want to go and rummage or if they want to go to the art fair. Big choice. Or both. Yes, or both. Yes. Um, the rummage sale on September 8th is from 11 to 3. And Friday, September 9th, it's from 9 to 3. Also, you can rent a table if you want to sell things. Uh, all you have to do is call 414-302-8700 if you'd like to rent a table as well. And we want to also announce the 40th anniversary for our senior center. 40 long years this center has been the center for the seniors. And it's a wonderful organization. Uh, they're having an open house with refreshments and a lot of acts and you can see what it's all about. So. I invite you to go, and this will be open from noon to 4 on September 22nd. So there's lots of things happening at the Senior Center, and if you want to find out, you just go and visit on that particular day, September 22nd. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other alderperson's reports? Alderman Vitale. Yeah, I'd like to say to older person Rosalind Reinke, yeah, I was at that time when I was born, you know, 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a few years before you can join the Senior Center. Yeah. <laughs> Any other older person's reports? Okay. We'll move Better on to item mind. I, Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the <clears throat> minutes August 2nd and August fifth of the Common Council meeting. Second. second. There's a motion and a second, and another second, and then another second. Um, any changes to the minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Standing committee reports, we have none. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. If there's no objection from any members of the council, I move for approval of the consent agenda as it is presented. Second. We have a motion, we have a second by Alderperson Reinke. Any discussion? If there's no discussion, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Alderperson Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Reinke. Aye. 
Roach. Aye. Stepanski. Aye. Tenorio. Aye. Vitale. Aye. Nine in favor, one excused. Motion carries. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move that we stand in recess until conclusion of the committee meetings. Second. We have a motion and a second by Alderperson Reinke. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are in recess.